Hi, I'm Lauren Passarelli with another Guitar Insight. Alternating picking is very important on guitar. It's harder to do if you have too much of your pick sticking out. So, you know, choke up on the pick and have very little of it sticking out. And whether you're playing acoustic or electric, to play down and play up is essential because these other strings are in the way and there are specific notes you actually want to play and you need to learn how to get around the guitar and actually feel confident where you are and work on a downstroke and an upstroke. You could even practice that on every string. Alternating picking is the foundation. It's like alternating hands on drums. It's also like up and down bowing on a violin. It's how we make a sound. Whether you're alternating your fingers or alternating a pick, you're wanting to learn how to play with fluency, dexterity, coordination. It's unnatural to hold our hands like this. All of it takes practice, all of it takes time because you're trying to make the synapse connection in your mind. You know, your, your hand-eye mind coordination, the brain send these signals to your hands on how to play. You can take a song you already know how to play with your fingers and just start playing it with a pick just to get the feel for it. You could also practice any of the scales you know. With a pick. You can do finger exercises. Uh, that would be a good place to start if you're not used to it already. Between the four fingers and the four frets, you have 24 different possibilities down here to play and use your alternating picking. So you can do down on one, up on two, down on three, up on four. And you can do 10 or 20 of these on every single string. You might already know how to tap or do sweep picking. You might do those scales where you have the uh, open strings and the harmonics. Every single thing that you can do on the guitar, the percussive playing, it's a bit of a, a, it's a way to play, which turns into a technique, an ability. You can then start practicing string skipping exercises. To me, the foundation for even being able to groove is being able to control this pick and do the alternating picking. Um, I loved all those crazy string exercises in the Modern Method book. And of course, I had to play a lot of classical pieces with a pick when I was a student at Berkeley, being a, a contemporary performance major. Uh, but it made me very funky. Like, I really like skipping strings even in my own music. Uh, a song of mine called Blast of Love has this chord, but I don't just strum the chord. I go through and do the alternating picking. So it felt like to me it really helped my funk playing because now even just instead of doing a... I can even do a... I have control over whether I want to play the low strings or the high strings. You know, it's just a lot of certainty. And you're wanting to build that coordination, dexterity, and strength because then when you have to play chords, you actually have the ability to play and put your fingers anywhere to play all these different voicings and your fingers work. We're talking about fluency, we're talking about ability, we're talking about a foundation of being able to express yourself in a way that is uh, easy and flows for you. 
And so you don't want to be struggling with the instrument. I've had a lot of very cool composers and guitar players who sound very good, including Pat Metheny, tell me they struggle with guitar, and it's because they never got down the alternating picking. And a lot of people choose not to use a pick because, of course, your fingers are more natural. You know, <laughs> you've had your fingers a lot longer than you've been having a pick in your hands, so you can control your fingers a little bit better. And you like the sound because of the soft skin and maybe a little bit of nail just to get a good clarity on the top end. But when you learn how to control a pick, it opens up a whole other set of techniques and abilities. And of course, if you were going to do phrasing where you have several downstrokes in a, a row or several upstrokes in a row, it depends on the articulation. It's like putting the punctuation in different places. Uh, horn players and violin players, string players, they are all taught articulation. They're all taught when to play something long, when to play something short, when to play it with uh, all upstrokes or downstrokes. It, it really depends on the phrasing that you need. It's like trying to say a sentence. You can say it an infinite amount of ways and get different emotions out of the same words. You can get different emotions out of the same notes. Um, I was uh, learning this riff. A very long time ago. <laughs> and I thought, because of my alternating picking, that was a nice way to play it. But when I listened to closer to the record and wanted to have it have the articulation and the energy, I realized that it was a little bit on top of the beat and it was with downstrokes. So it was a little bit more aggressive. I mean, the downstrokes, you have with gravity involved. You know? Every single person I've ever taught, and that's since 1974, has benefited from alternating picking. It wasn't too hard, it was just something to learn. If you're a classical player, you don't really know that technique to get the tremolo happening until you learn a piece. So learn a classical piece with a pick. Learn a piece with your fingers. Develop the techniques that actually help you play well. And watch players that have good hands. Um, I was just lucky enough to uh, be watching George Benson when I was a kid and my teacher Lou Sabini and George Harrison and they just happened to have very good hand technique. They weren't anchoring, uh, they weren't uh, leaning, they weren't muffled all the time. I, mean, I really like hovering because you're free and it's more ergonomic. You know, if I have my fingers hanging out where I'm trying to play lead, it's almost like the rotisserie chicken not being trussed properly and tied up. You know, it just flops every time it comes around. You're going to find that you're uneven. And to me, alternating picking is the foundation for groove. Really, if you don't have control over the pick, you don't have a decent groove. Um, you should be able to... You should be able to play whatever notes you want. Uh, you know, a piano player has 88 keys, but they play the notes they want. They don't play them all at the same time. To me, you know, a lot of players can play the single notes. And they can do the comping. They could do the bass line stuff. But they can't do this. It's just fun to groove. Rhythm, rhythm is, <laughs> rhythm is cool. I love when people get up and dance to just me, just playing one guitar. You know, the the time is in you, your sense of time. So if you can imagine a band all the time, or you can imagine a drummer playing with you, and find the pocket of what you're doing, and actually get in and find that groove. It's fabulous, and uh, the best way to practice that is with a metronome and with drum grooves and loops and things, and then record it and listen back and you know, see if when you played, if you really were on the downbeats you thought you were on, and when you played on those offbeats, if they were even. You know, it's like a pie. Once you decide on a tempo, all those points of downbeats and offbeats are defined, and you can be a little ahead of the beat or a little behind the beat, you could be in the center of the beat, but you have to be 
playing with the beat, you know? I mean, we can play at the same time as the beat, but we're not always in sync with the beat. Work with your teacher or some good books that, uh, that work on hand technique. Work on the actual ability to play, and then anything and everything you want to play on guitar will be better. Nothing is ever wasted. You'll never be wasting your time. You'll never find that, oh, I never used that. Um, most of the time when you're not using it, it's because you don't know how to do it. And if you don't do it well, it's not going to make your music sound good, so of course you're not going to want to use it. But skipping strings is, is not an option. You want to play guitar, you've got to skip strings. Uh, you know, these are in the way. So for great ability in playing in time, and certainly playing in the pocket of the groove, work on your alternating picking. I remember learning how to juggle when I was in college, and uh, the instructions said to practice the, with the bean bags, practice with one, practice your toss, practice controlling the one toss. Because, you know, if you threw it and it ended up across the room, you're never going to be able to get it in a volley to do the triplet to get the, the <laughs> uh, all three to rebound and, and come back to where you expect them so that you can toss them again. It's the same thing with the picking. If your pick is all over the place, you can't count on it, and then you hate playing rhythm guitar. But it really doesn't take much. It just takes focus. And you're fo like anything else you want to do with guitar, it's just going to take a little time. But you'll be surprised at how fast... It, it develops. By the time you learn a piece, you've got the technique. So if, even if you practice some of these things I'm talking about 10 minutes every day or a couple of times a day, by the end of the week, it'll be different. You know, what you're building is a relationship with your guitar and you really want to know it. You really want to be able to play it, uh, especially Berkeley's motto, right? It's to be rather than to seem. The guitar is the easiest instrument to pick up and, and play on your own, and it's the youngest instrument, I think, in some ways, because um, we don't have this real long history of rock and roll teaching or whatever, you know, so everybody's used to winging it and doing it on their own. But there are ways in which you sound better or actually know the instrument better, and you wouldn't do that with piano necessarily, or especially with violin. Um, you know, the shortcut is to get some really good books and some good teachers and really get into it. And you get more fun out of it that way. You certainly have more control and your original music is better and everything is better. You just feel more like the real player because you are. <laughs>